Can Ash Ketchum beat Pokemon Luminescent Platinum? That's what we'll be trying to do today. Luminescent Platinum is a ROM hack of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which tries to make the games harder and adds in a ton of quality of life changes and improvements like better 3D models. So to do this, we're going to be battling the whole game, only using Ash's Pokemon from the anime. And while doing this, we also have a few small rules to follow. Now, let's get started. All right, our journey has begun. And man, it's nice to be back in Sinnoh, though it does look a bit different. We start off by hunting after Barry, our little rival, until we of course meet Rowan and get offered one of the starter Pokemon. So we're going to be going for Chimchar, and the reason for choosing Chimchar is because it is able to fully evolve into Infernape, just like Ash has won from the anime. Shortly after doing this though, it's time to battle Barry and his Piplup. Now you will notice this version of BDSP is modified to work just like Platinum, but also has better and faster animations. So we start off with Ember, but realize that that won't really do much, so we just keep on smashing, you know, a bunch of scratch onto it until we finally defeat our buddy's Pokemon. After telling our mom about our plans to travel the region, it's time to head out. But hey, wait, there's no Mr. Mime here to take care of Mrs. Ketchum? Oh well, either way, we'll talk to Barry and head to the lake where a chibi version of Cyrus walks by. Then we get a new item called the Incense Burner, which basically changes which Pokemon show up in the wild. We then get to choose between four different things we want to see in the wild. Now, the funny part about this is actually that you can essentially, eventually, have every single Pokemon in this game. They're going to be adding that in the update. Either way, we go for Alola, since the potential of finding Rowlet is just too enticing. We go to Rowan's lab, where we receive the Move Reminder, which lets us teach our Pokemon Pokemon moves that they should have known from before. After getting the Pokedex, we go back home and talk to our mom, and put on a brand new outfit. We take on the Pikachu hoodie one because we're playing as Ash, so anything Pikachu related is good. On our way to the first gym, we stop by Dawn for a quick battle. Luckily, it is against her Turtwig, so we use three Embers and defeat Dawn very quickly. We then make our way through a wave of trainers before we finally reach Jubilee City, where we go into a confrontation with Looker, who of course is from the International Pokemon Police. After a tiny bit of searching around, we find Barry at the trainer school, where he basically just runs away from us and waits for us at the next route for a battle. But first, we level up Chim Chimchar and actually evolve him into Monferno. Then it's time to battle Barry. We start with a power-up punch which boosts our attack and allows us to use Mac Punch to one-punch the Pidgey away. Next, Barry sends out a Ralt, so we go for Flame Wheel that also one-hit KOs the Ralts. We miss our power-up punch against the Piplup again though and eat a Water Gun, but our second power-up punch hits and with one more Mac Punch, we have defeated Barry. And now we can move move on and try to get to the first gym. After going through the cave, we actually reach Orborg City, where we find a Muscle Band item. Now, Muscle Band will actually boost our physical attack, so we give it to Monferno to boost its attack before we send Roark back to his gym after finding him down in the cave. And so, we actually go back and it's time to battle Roark, who mainly uses Rock-type Pokemon. Starting with a Shield on, so we go for a Power-Up Punch to boost our attack. We do this move twice as it boosts our attack to double and allows us to defeat the Shield on. Next up is Rhyhorn, so we keep using Power-Up Punch and maxing our damage. However, we get totally demolished by the Rhyhorn and a single Earthquake. Now, this is a problem, so we'll need to figure out a solution for it. To make sure we can win the battle, we head out and capture ourselves a Starly in one of the previous routes, and we add it to our squad. We also make sure to evolve it into Staravia, and then we quickly run back to the gym and take on Roark for a second time. This time around, we're dealing with Shieldon out first again, so we of course go for the power-up punch that boosts our attack. Meanwhile, the Shieldon sets up Stealth Rocks. Now, I should point out, as you may notice, these gym leaders, every single boss battle in this game, so that includes gym leaders, Elite Four, even freaking, like, I think Cyrus, all of them have four different possible teams they can use against you, and all of their team are competitively ready to be used. Either way, after maxing out our damage, we get hit by an Aqua Jet from the Anorith, but it doesn't matter because our Power Up Punch once more does the job. Same goes for the Omanite when it gets out, as well as for Nose Pass. They don't really, you know, it doesn't fear much better for them because they basically just survive thanks to the ability Sturdy and then use a Thunder Wave to paralyze us. But we still have Mac Punch, which is priority, so we still end up hitting and defeating the Nose Pass, leaving only one more Pokemon, and that is Kranidos. We go for another Mac Punch, and that pretty much spells the unfortunate end for the poor Kranidos, and also means we got ourselves our first gym badge now. As we make our way back to Jubilee City, we run across Rowan and Dawn being attacked by Team Galactic, so we help out. In the double battle, we once again use Monferno with Power Up Punch to boost our damage and destroy both Galactic Grunt members. After which point, we head into Route 204, we find our original homie Pikachu. Yes, we're kind of like finally capture Pikachu into our team. We'll be capturing him, but what is also cool is that he uses a custom animation, so that just looks awesome. So once we've captured it, 
we head right into Floroma Town, where a little girl asks for our help over at the Wind Plant. We then fight through waves of Team Galactic grunts until we finally reach Commander Mars, who we also take on in a quick battle. Against the Zubat, we use Power Up Punch, uh, to first, like, just boost our damage. Even the move doesn't really do that much, though, but we still get the boost. We do also get Confused Raid by the Zubat. Next, we go for the Flame Wheel, which one hits the Zubat and defeats it. With Bronzor coming out next, we still manage to hit the Bronzor with a Flame Wheel and defeat it as well. Yanma is next out, and it actually manages to hit us with a Wing Attack, which does tons of damage, but it's not the end of the world, because our Flame Wheel one hit KOs that boy as well. Perugly is her final Pokemon. We have to deal with it and we start with a Mac Punch, but it's not enough because Perugly has a Citrus Berry that heals it and an Aerial Ace that destroys our Monferno. So we send in Pikachu next, we use Facade and that manages to actually hit it. And then we double kick that pretty much leaves Perugly on very low health. With Pikachu falling, we send in Staravia next, and of course, we intimidate it to lower, po lower Porugly's attack, but we also make sure to, you know, get the victory. We also go for Quick Attack, which also is going to hit first, and in the process, we've defeated Commander Mars, and we kicked out Team Galactic from the Windworks. As we're trying to head to the next forest, we run into Cheryl, and she wants to battle us. For her Drifloon, we lose our Inferno against it, but we send out Pikachu instead, with a Hex hitting the Pikachu's face before our Spark does decent damage, but Pikachu falls to a second Hex, so Staravia only remains still. Our Aerial Ace actually does manage to finally defeat the Drifloon, then she sends out a Whalmer, which comes out, and we survive on only 4 HP after a Rock Tomb, and that slows us down, so we lose against a Rollout. Yeah, this is a problem. We might need to go back here, and we need to first maybe catch a few new Pokemon. So we return all the way back to Jubilee City, where we go inside of the Pokemon Center. Here we find an interviewer lady who asks us a bunch of quiz questions. After answering all of them, Correct, she asks for a battle. Her first Pokemon is Bulbasaur, so we Flame Wheel it a single time. Second out is Charmander, here we go for Power Up Punch, which does tons of damage and takes down the Charmander in one hit, leaving only Squirtle to also be one hit by a Power Up Punch. After defeating her, she offers us the choice of one of the starter Pokemon. Now, I wanted to go for Squirtle or Bulbasaur, because that's two of the ones that she's offering, and she also, of course, has, you know, Charmander, but mostly because those two are super useful, right? Squirtle and Bulbasaur. But here's the thing. Issue is that Ash never evolved his Bulbasaur or Squirtle, which means they won't really be the strongest of Pokemon, and even if we did evolve them, I still find that Charmander will be more useful, even though we have a Fire-type. So, right away we got the Charmander, evolved it into Charmeleon, and what's best is that it even holds a Charcoal, so its Fire-type moves will be even stronger. However, there is one more Pokemon we can still get before we head towards the second gym, as well as Cheryl in the forest. We first pick up the Miracle Seed on the way to Floroma Town again. Inside of the Pokemon Center, we find another one of the interviewer ladies. We once again answer her questions, and that leads into a battle. After this, we can actually choose again one of them to go with us. But this time around, there's actually going to be a few other choices. It's going to be Generation 2 Pokemon. So, Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and of course, Totodile. We decide to go for Chikorita, and we already evolve it into Bayleaf with the max evolution for it. So, now that we have that sorted and done, we can head back in and take on Cheryl. Back in the Eterna Forest, Cheryl is waiting for us to battle once more. This time, her Drift Bloom catches the heat from the flame wheel, and we still live on 5 HP after the aerial ace, with the second flame wheel taking the balloon boy down. For Whalmer, we use Power Up Punch and then fall to a Water Pulse. So Pikachu has to come in with a Shock Wave that is super effective, but not enough. So after a Water Pulse that almost defeated Pikachu, we use another Shock Wave to take Whalmer out. Makuhita fakes us out next and defeats Pikachu. So Staravia comes in with the Intimidate, of course, also lowering the little Makuhita's damage and a single Aerial Ace to destroy the poor Makuhita in a single second flat, leaving only Chansey left. We do get Thunderbolted by it, but we just keep spamming Aerial Ace and we send in Charm. Charmeleon at the end with Dragon Breath to finish the battle up for us. However, she goes for a soft boil, so we have to keep trying to take her health down, which takes a while, but eventually we defeat Cheryl. Now, Cheryl wants to go through the forest with us, so eventually, after a lot of battling, we make it out of Eterna Forest and into Eterna City. But apparently, Gardenia is not here, so we need to find her on Route 216, and yes, that is the cold route. So, after a quick conversation with the guy blocking the Galactic HQ, we run into the Chibi Cynthia, which looks really weird. To find Gardenia, we head through the mountain into Route 206, or 216, which is cold and and difficult to get through, and it requires a lot of battling. And exactly after doing that, after battling through several different people along the icy route, we eventually make it to a cabin where we find the gym leader herself, Gardenia. We talk to her and she returns to her gym. Now that we're back in 
in a city, we make sure to go pick up some repels from the Pokemon and then head inside the gym. Gardenia informs us that we need to battle all her minions before we can actually challenge her. Lucky for us, most of her minions are not strong enough, and Monferno is able to three sweep through pretty much her Lotad, the Cacnea of the first trainer, her Shroomish and Execute stand even less of a chance to our Flame Wheel, and the rest of the trainers are not really able to put up much of a fight either. So, once we defeated them all, now it's time. So, Gardenia herself is ready. We start off the battle with a fake out against her Roserade. And since this is a difficulty ROM hack, it means her team is full stacked. She has a team of six Pokemon. So, with a crazy amount of Pokemon that are strong, we try our best. She even tries to set up Toxic Spikes, so we use Monferno and Flame Wheel to defeat the Roserade. Vormadam is out next, and it tries to use Quiver Dance to increase its speed and damage, but we still outspeed with the Flame Wheel and defeat it. The Shift Re comes out next, and it doesn't stand a chance again to our Fiery Flames, as the Flame Wheel is defeating it in one hit. Groval is still on her team, but it doesn't stand a chance again, and we also take it down. Bayleaf is the penultimate Pokemon, and again, we hit it, and we also get a burn on it, which means that its physical attacks will be weaker. The only Pokemon remaining now on her team is the Alolan Exeggutor, which actually destroys our boy. But we have Charmeleon with the Dragon Breath, but eventually it takes out our Charmeleon as well. We then have to constantly deal with a Dragon Tail pushing out our Staravia in and out before Pikachu is finally able to hit a Thunder Wave to paralyze it so that Staravia and Bayleaf can finally do enough damage to take this big fella down. And there it is, we finally got ourselves our second Gym Badge, putting us one step closer to the goal of finding Cynthia and becoming the champions of the Sinnoh region. Now we're actually able to go inside of the Eterna City Galactic HQ building, where we take down a bunch of Galactic Grunts as we're trying to get through the building to the top. As we reach the top, we find Commander Jupiter, and we take Commander Jupiter on a battle. She gets a fake out to the face on her Golbat, but it's still stronger than us and destroys us. So we send in Pikachu with a Thunderbolt to take down the Golbat, but it's not strong enough, so we use Staravia with the move Aerial Ace to defeat it. Tangela catches an Aerial Ace to the face as well and falls quickly. Sableye is out next and hits us with a Fake Out, which does a lot of damage but also flinches us, so we keep throwing Draining Kisses on the Sableye over and over until it finally gets defeated, which actually takes a while. Next out is the Skuntank, who uses Defog, so we just throw two Flamethrowers its way, which eventually also takes it down. Taking down the Commander Jupiter and now getting rid of Team Galactic for the time being. We go to the Cycle Shop where Cynthia forces us to take a Pokemon Egg, and then we make our way down the Cycling Path and actually go underneath the Cycling Path on the hunt for a Gibble. So we enter the Wayward Cave. Here we run into Mira, who forces us into a battle, and hey, this team that she uses is relatively strong, and it takes a while to defeat her, but once we've actually defeated her, we're now able to actually go around with her in this place, and also hunt for a Gibble. After spending quite some time searching, we finally find a Gibble, and we capture it and add it to the squad, and we also help out Mira to get out of the cave. He won't, like, she's a bit annoying to deal with, but eventually we get out of here. Now, on our way to the next gym, we actually get stopped by Dawn, as she wants to battle us. Now, we manage to do some damage to her Pillow Swine, which is out first, but it's not enough, so Bayleaf comes out with an Energy Ball to finish it off. The next Pokemon that Dawn uses is Lopunny, and we go for the Aerial Ace, which defeats it using Staravia. Clefable is out next, and this thing is really strong, so a Flamethrower from the Charmeleon is our main move next. We do get paralyzed though, which makes it harder to hit the Clefable first, as it's now able to also heal itself using Moonlight, which is honestly really freaking annoying, making this battle extremely painful. Now that we've defeated that thing though, only Grottle remains, so our Charmeleon goes for the Flamethrower, and it takes down her final Pokemon and final teammate. Shortly after this battle, however, we run into Chibi Cyrus. Man, they really butchered our boy, didn't they? Just as we're about to hit our next destination, we get stopped by Aaron of the Elite Four. You guys know him, the bug user, and he wants to battle us, so we oblige and go for it. Now, he uses bug types, so first out is Ariados, and it sets up Sticky Web, which is going to make our team slower. However, Charmeleon is on our side, and we slam a flamethrower to his face, taking it down. Pinsir is out next, and that also is the one that manages to take out our Charmeleon, so we send in Staravia, which has Aerial Ace and Stab on it, so we destroy the Pinsir. Mothim catches the fastest aerial aces to the dome and its head, and it's defeated. With Scizor being out next, we can't outspeed it, and we do lose our Staravia. Monferno is the only able one now to actually hit a single flame wheel before the bullet punch destroys our little boy. And yeah, we lose the battle, but we also receive X Scissor, the move at least, for the battle, so that was fine. And so we finally make it to Hot Home City, where a Boneri is being hunted by a Shaman, which is uh, a bit strange. We meet our mom here as well at the contest hall, and we find Fantina here as well. And now it's time for her to return to the gym and for us to get our third gym badge. 
After answering a ton of math questions, we make it all the way to Fantina and her ghost types. Again, it doesn't really do much and it gets demolished. But yeah, this battle is lost. We stood no chance, so we'll have to return a bit more prepared the second time around. Now, to make this battle a bit easier for ourselves, we decide to actually capture a few extra Pokemon that Ash uses. Now, one of the first ones we found a little bit by accident was actually... Galarian Farfetch'd. Yes, the Galarian Farfetch, we find it right outside of Heart Home City, so we add it to our squad. Now, the second Pokemon we will actually find back in the Eterna City and the Eterna Forest. We go inside the old chateau, and here we look and capture a Ghastly, a Pokemon which Ash actually kind of owned twice. He actually owned Haunter in the original series, and then, of course, he owned Gengar in the Journey series. Now, either way, once we've gotten those two, from like, you know, the band episode and the Journey series. Once we got those, we actually go and add another fella to our squad. There's one more Pokemon which we need to get. The first thing we do is to evolve it into a Haunter and then evolve the Haunter into a Gengar. But before going into the battle again, we also make sure to get the Gift Snorlax from Jubilee City. There's a free one you can get and we evolve it from its Munchlax form right away into, of course, none else than a Snorlax. So yeah, Munchlax, Snorlax, it is what it is. Now it's time to go back and take on the battle. So this time around, we go for the Gabite. Again, I accidentally evolved it and we go with the Dragon Claw to slowly chip away at her Sableye after the Gengar has to come in and finish it off with a Dazzling Gleam. This does take it out, leaving us at a 5 versus 5. Next up is her Gengar, and lucky for us, we outspeed it and take it down with a Shadow Ball. But next up, though, is her Shed Ninja, which we hit, but it comes back at us harder and stronger and destroys our Gengar. So we send out Snorlax, and we're about to do something crazy. We're about to spam Curse. Now, Curse works differently for Ghost types and regular Pokemon, but for us, it boosts our defense and attack and is changed for our speed. We do these Curses two times to make sure we boost our defense, and lucky for us, we also have Rest that can heal us up, and we have a Chesto Berry, so we instantly wake up after using Rest. But the Shed Ninja goes for Confuse Ray, however, our Bite is hitting it, and it one-hit KOs it. Drifflim is out next, and we go for, actually, it goes for Stockpile, which we try to stop with a Bite, but she has Stockpile and the Strength Sap, and it hits us, so we lose our boosted attack, and we try to switch in Pikachu instead. We hit a Thunderbolt, and she lives barely, but the burn from her Flame Orb takes her down. We send out Staravia next, and she sends out a Dusclops. We also get Intimidated, Intimidate on off it, actually. We actually managed to lower its physical attack. This battle ends up being just a spam of Aerial Aces and Pain Splits, until we finally take it down, leaving only her Miss Magius left to go. We start with a bite. Due to our thick fat, we eat the damage from her, and after a ton of bites, she also falls to our Snorlax, and we've taken down the third gym leader. Before we're able to leave towards Route 209, we get stopped by our old friend Barry, who of course just can't leave us alone and he wants to battle. So he takes us on with his Smurgle out first. We hit it with a Dragon Claw, but he switches it out using U-Turn. Instead, we face off against a Shellgon, which we hit with a Dragon Claw as well. But we aren't strong enough. Instead, we send in Charmeleon with a Dragon Breath to take out the Shellgon. Before we get to deal with the next partner Pokemon, that being his Sand Slash, which destroys us with a single Bulldoze. So we send in Snorlax with, of course, the Curse to boost our attack and defense two times. And then we just use Bite, which pretty much demolishes the poor Sand Slash. Combuskin comes out next and manages to defend itself using Detect. And then we actually fire, it actually even fire punches us before our ba body slam actually hits it with a one hit KO and the little chicken is back at KFC. Smurgle comes in again and we just use Bite to take it out as well using Snorlax, one of our strongest members. When Pidgeotto comes in, it uses Uproar and is able to defeat Snorlax. So Pikachu comes by with a Thunderbolt and takes it down to leaving it only with only Primplup, Primplup to actually go left. So we do the same thing here. We use Thunderbolt and after two hits, the Primplup is taken out and down. And we can now move past Barry and make it to Route 209. Before we can leave for Route 209, an officer tells us that something is going on at the Pokemon Mansion in Heart Home, so we head back there and find Team Galactic causing trouble. We end up be dealing with them with all the grunts around the house before we make it further and actually our Staravia even evolves into a Staraptor while we're inside of here. We then make it into the mansion where we have to be three of the grunts in six turns. This is some odd mansion, which wasn't, I think, in the OG games, but it is a new feature of this ROM hack, I think. Either way, we take down the first enemy with two turns, so we have four more turns left to go. Next up, he uses a Ninjask, and we defeat it in two hits, 
as well, meaning we only have two more turns left for the final Grunt. Sheninja is the final Pokemon again. Luckily, we defeat it with only two hits, and we keep on battling through the rest of the Grunts until eventually we push away the one Grunt Brock in our path, and Commander Saturn returns and wants to battle us and Barry with the help of Mr. Bacalot. We end up actually defeating them relatively easily and kicking them out of the mansion. Now that that's done, we can head back into Route 209 along the way. Our Charmeleon evolves into Charizard, and shortly after this, we also then make it to Whalestone City. And now that we've reached this place, it's another location that's kind of controlled by Team Galactic. We head over to Veilstone Gym, where we meet Dawn and Crash Awake. Before we go inside the gym and solve the puzzle, which leads us to the gym leader of this place, also known as Maylene. Maylene comes out with the maxed out team of fighting types in this gym. She starts out with Farfetch using a Brick Break that does tons of damage to us. So, Staraptor has to come in instead and is finally able to take down the Farfetch. Next, that's Hitmon is actually Hitmonlee, which we do one hit KO, baby. And after that, we have the same luck and strength against her Primate, which we one hit KO. And the same fate follows for Medicham and her second to last Pokemon, leaving only Lucario, which survives the Aerial Ace. But then we send in Gengar with a Shadow Ball, which is enough to defeat it and take out Maylene's final Pokemon, giving us our fourth gym badge. We then run into Dawn outside the gym, and she tells us that Team Galactic stole her Pokedex, so we gotta help her out and find it. We help Dawn out with the Team Galactic grunts before we head out of Veilstone City and slowly make our way towards Pastoria City. Once we reach it and we find the gym, we get forced into a battle with Barry. Of course, he's using his full team, so we start off with Cherizard, because yes, we have a Cherizard now, and sweep through a few Pokemon before Gengar comes out and goes for Shadow Ball to take out loads of them little by little, until Empoleon is the only one that remains, and we finish that fella off with Staraptor using close combat. After running around Route 212, we find Crasher Wake and force him to return to his gym, where we're going to be challenging him to a battle. We gotta go through all his grunts before though, and then we make it to the man himself. Now, once we reach Crash Awake, we make sure to put Galarian Fartfetched on our squad, and the reason for this is that it gains the move Leaf Blade, which is far more useful in this battle than, for example, Charizard will be. We also head over to Veilstone City and the department store there to pick up a few items which we'll need for the battle against Crash Awake, and while shopping around, we actually find Bertha, one of the Elite Four members, and she even offers to battle us for the TM Earthquake, so we go for it. The battle against her is really difficult, but eventually we do it. Before our battle with Crash Wake actually started, we also evolved Monferno into Infernape. So when the battle begins, we have Snorlax out first and face off against a Quillfish. We start by spamming Curse to boost our attack and defense as much as possible. This is something you'll notice we do a lot because Snorlax is really strong. After doing this basically several times, we max out our defense and attack, which took a while, but the biggest thing we have now is that we need to use Rest to fall asleep. And thanks to the Chesto Berry, the Snorlax is actually able to wake up instantly again. And then we just spam Body Slam. Quillfish falls after a single crunch, then Vaporeon comes in with a Toxic that poisons us, but we still hit, hit it with a one-hit KO, and then Vaporeon falls, of course Gastrodon catches the same exact hit to the face with a Body Slam, Huntail is next, and once more we survive a hit from it, and our Body Slam defeats it. Crawdont is the next problem, and once more we survive a waterfall, and our Body Slam is destroying the little crab. But then finally our Snorlax falls due to the poison. With one more Pokemon remaining on Crash Awake's side, we go for Farfetch'd, and we instantly lose him to a waterfall from the Float Seal. Next up is Infernape, where we go for a Fake Out, which flinches the Float Seal, and then we go for a Mac Punch to make sure we outspeed, because this thing does have Aqua Jet, and that is it. That Mac Punch was enough, and we defeated the big man himself, Crash Awake, and I'll be honest, this battle actually took up a lot of our time it was way more difficult and forced us to do a little bit of over leveling because we just couldn't beat it with how difficult his team was every time it switched now that we finished the gym, it seems like Team Galactica causing trouble at the Safari Zone, so we're asked to hunt after the Galactic Grunts. As we follow him, we get back to Veilstone City, and we first battle the Grunt we were hunting and defeat his Toxic Craig quickly. We then run into Cynthia, who gives us some medicine for the Psyducks on Route 210. We return to Veilstone and then make our way to Route 210, where we find the Psyducks and we help them out. We also then meet Cynthia again, and we receive the old charm from her, and after doing that, we can now make our way towards Celestic Town. Just as we reach Celestic Town, we get forced into a battle with Dawn. She has an Alakazam out first, and we start with a Fake Out to flinch it from our Infernape, and then we Flame Field to defeat it. The Alakazam is down. Vaporeon is out next, and we hit a Close Combat, which, after two hits, defeats the Vaporeon. Mamoswine falls to a single Close Combat, and we then defeat the Clefable, which comes out, and we hit it with a Flame Wheel a few times, which defeats it. We then deal with a Low Pony, which comes in, and finally our boy falls and is defeated. So, we send in Farfetch'd instead with a Close Combat, which does take down the Low Pony. 
body. Finally, only Torterra remains. We use a Brave Bird, but the Wooden Hammer defeats our boy, so Staraptor has to come in and Brave Bird again, and there it is. We've defeated Dawn, who now lets us explore the town. Now that once we're in the town, we actually run into a grunt blocking our access to the cavern. So we battle him, and of course, we whoop him. Now that we sorted things out in Celestic Town, we fly over to Jubilee City and make our way towards the Canaleve City. But the road here is actually blocked, and we're told to go to the Renegade Park instead. So we fly into Sanjum Town and make our way down to the river, and there we go to Renegade Park. In the park, we meet Professor Oak, and then we also run into the Castle Valet Darash and Lady Caitlyn. Now, he's looking after her and he wants to go into a battle with us. So, we battle him. We defeat his Gallade with a fake out in the flame wheel. Staraptor is out next and we defeat it with a single close combat. Empoleon is not very strong against us either as we want to KO it using the close combat once again. We also get our hands on a Flare Blitz now so we can actually take down the Metagross which comes out next. So, we go for the Flare Blitz because it's going to want to KO. That's the reason for this is because this Pokemon technically, you know, has that Psychic typing so it's going to be a little bit more annoying. Either way, that means the Raja only has two Pokemon left. First is Alakazam, where we go for the Flare Blitz again before our Infernape finally actually dies to the recoil from the damage from it, leaving our only Pokemon, Staraptor, to finish up the battle. And this man is using a freaking Entei. Yes, he has an Entei. I didn't expect the last Pokemon to be that, but here we go. We start off with a close combat, which takes over half of its health down with the Entei, and we then avoid a Stone Edge, which is incredible, while slapping away a second close combat, which actually destroys the Entei, giving us the victory. Lady Caitlyn is pissed off, though, so he gives her some tea, and we also get some of that tea as well as we need it to give it to the officer blocking the way into Canalave. Now that we're inside of the city, Barry just has to run into us and force us into a battle as always. He starts by using Trick on his Sableye, and our Flare Blitz manages to burn him, but not defeat him. He taunts us next, but it doesn't matter, so our Flare Blitz goes again, and finally, his little Rock Ghost type is gone. When Camera Up comes out next, though, it earthquakes, and our Porth Infernape stands no chance, so we send in Snorlax and start by spamming Curse several times to, of course, as per usual, boost our defense and attack, and of course, we'll lose our speed. But we also eat a Solar Beam to the belly that does hurt a bit, but finally, we use Body Slam, and the Camera Up is gone. On. Staraptor joins us next and uses a close combat, which doesn't defeat our Snorlax, but we are able to, uh, well, kind of, we're too slow to do anything against the next Pokemon after using the Body Slam against the Staraptor, so when Kingdra comes out, we can't outspeed it, and when the Outrage hits us, our poor friend Snorlax is gone. Next, we send out Gengar and go for Dazzling Gleam, which is super effective, but we still have to eat an Outrage to the face before our second Dazzling Gleam defeats the Kingdra, and then Dusknor has to join us. Afterwards, however, it, it's, it is a little bit difficult to defeat, so we send in Farfetch'd with Night Slash, which after a single hit is actually been outsped by a Shadow Sneak, so Staraptor has to finish things up with an Aerial Ace to finish the Dusknor, leaving Empoleon as, I guess, the final Pokemon, so we go for close combat because it is a Steel-type, so it is weak and thankfully it is a single hit KO, which means we defeated Barry again. So now he can leave us alone and we can head to the Iron Islands to find the Cantaleaf City Gym Leader because that's where he's currently hiding. On the Iron Islands, we run into Byron, and he tells us to go around exploring. As we do that, we run into Riley, who wants to battle us, so of course, as we've been doing with every single person in this game, we oblige. We start by defeating his Absol with Mac Punch and Fake Out. Against his Metagross, we use Flare Blitz because Metagross has secondary Psychic Typing. It is better to use a move like Flare Blitz, which will be super effective against it, as I mentioned earlier. It is a Steel and, you know, Psychic Typing, so Flare Blitz will be much, much, much more useful than Close Combat. However, for the next Pokemon, which is Salamence, our friend Infernape stands no chance, so out comes Gengar with Dazzling Gleam, which takes down the big dragon Salamence. Ursaring is out next, and here's just a matter of hitting a few, you know, several Dazzling Gleams next, and of course it will fall. Next out is Slacking, and this fella destroys our Gengar, so Staraptor with a close combat joins the battle and destroys this thing. With only Lucario remaining, we once more go for the close combat, which one hit KOs his ace Pokemon and gives us the win. We can now join Riley inside of the cave and go training with him as we meet up and go through the cave together. We then run into a group of Team Galactic grunts, and with the help of Riley, we take every single one of them down. We also get given an egg by Riley, and some of you will already know what's inside of it, but those who do not know, well, basically, it's a Riolu. And then we run over to Byron once more, and we also talk to him before we can return to Canalave City to take on his gym. 
Now that we've completed all the gym puzzles, which takes only a little bit of time, we actually make it to Byron himself. It's time for the battle. We reach the top of the gym and it's time to commence the battle. First out is his Skarmory and we start of course off with a Flare Blitz, but it's not enough to defeat it right away and it allows him to set up Stealth Rocks with Skarmory. So we go for Mac Punch next, which actually takes down the Steel Bird. Agron comes out next and as you may notice, he's using a full team of Steel types because that's his whole gimmick. Either way, we are able to hit it with a close combat this time, but it then actually destroys our boy with a head smash. We send in Farfetch next and try to go for a close combat with him as well. So this is a steel type gym, spamming these moves makes the most amount of sense. Well, once we've taken him down, then Marwile comes out, and once again we go for a close combat, which takes about half of its HP down, but it's not enough, so we end up having to use Snorlax instead. Starting by using Curse to of course boost our defense and attack, but Marwile is using Power Up Punch, which does tons of damage and also boosts its own attack. This doesn't work out, so we go for Gengar instead, and use a Shadow Ball, which is enough to take down the Marwile. Of course, next is going to be Magnazone. This is an electric steel type, and our Shadow Ball is able to basically lower its special defense, but we also lose to a discharge. So we only really have Staraptor left to kind of work with. So we go for a close combat, which is perfect as it hits and defeats the Magnazone, but we still have two more Pokemon to deal with. We go for the Brave Bird against the Wormadam, and it's just perfect as it falls down, and we just have to now deal with Bastiodon, the final Pokemon. We managed to hit it with a close combat, but it survives on barely any HP and goes for Power Gem that demolishes us. With only Pikachu remaining now, we managed to somehow outspeed, luckily, because we are faster, and Thunderbolt it, and there it is. Luckily, we managed to defeat and totally demolish Byron, which means this fierce battle is victorious for us. We then run into Barry and head to the Canaleve Library, where we learn that Team Galactic are up to something. We run around in different lakes battling grunts, stopping the Team Galactic members, and then run into Commander Saturn, which, well, basically we force him into a battle. His Bronzong falls to a Flare Blitz, then is mostly sweeping through the rest of its team. I mean, literally just sweeping them. We run over to the next lake, when save Dawn from Commander Mars, who we also battle, and same thing here, we just sweep through most of our team, before it's time to make our way to Snowpoint City. As we make our way up to Snowpoint, we go through this whole place and we're just shaking, man, because uh, it's cold, bro, it's cold. We go to the Snowpoint Temple and battle the gods outside of it. At the bottom of the temple, as we go through it, we find Candace, the gym leader, alongside Maylene, and they're dealing with the giant Regigigas. We help them put the Regigigas to sleep for now, and once we finish that up, it's time to take on the gym badge and gym leader of this location. It's time to take on Candace. We start off the battle against Candace after just going through the whole puzzle, but basically she's using ice. Type. She sends in Lapras first, which is great, so we go for the close combat, which does insane damage. Mamoswine is out next and also falls to a single close combat from Infernape. Following up is Glalie, which again stands not much of a chance either, and is also taken down by a single hit. However, when Glaceon comes in, however, our sweep basically ends here and an Infernape falls to its damage. But fear not, we still have a few more Pokemon. For example, Farfetch'd, however, stands no chance of the extra sensory, so we have to use Star Raptor, because Star Raptor is our clutch. We eat a Blizzard once more, and things are starting to look kind of bad for us, so we send in Snorlax, because yes, Star Raptor is not standing a chance either. However, Snorlax does have Curse, so we do it twice to boost our defense and attack, and then we're able to do quite a bit of damage to Glaceon. Now, this Body Slam finally hits it, and Glaceon is gone. Delibird, however, ends our Snorlax's life, so we send in Pikachu and go for Thunderbolt, which hits it and is able to one-hit KO it. However, next is Frostlass, and we finish her final Pokemon up with a Shadow Ball from our final Pokemon, Gengar. That means we have our second to last Gym Badge now, we just gotta get one more and then it's the Elite Four time. Now that we're in Snowpoint City, we run over to the local lake and find Commander Jupiter dealing with Barry. Afterwards, afterwards, we actually fly into Veilstone to attack the Team Galactic HQ. We find Looker and enter through the back of the HQ, we explore the whole facility, and once we make it to the top, we find Cyrus. He, of course, requires us to battle him, so we go in and defeat him after a relatively long battle. At the end, we also receive a Master Ball from him. After doing all of this, we go into the back room and we actually stop Saturn at the HQ for while he's, you know, basically dealing with the Lake Trio, and we force him to be released. Next up, we climb in and through the Mount Coronet entrance on the hunt for the rest of Team Galactic. We go through the whole cave until we reach the top where we find Sky Pillar and, of course, Team Galactic and Cyrus. Now, this battle is going to be interesting. First of all, we deal with Commander Mars and Jupiter with the help of Barry. After defeating them, it's actually time to have a long and drawn-out battle against the final boss, Cyrus. First thing Cyrus does is to summon Dialga and Palkia, and after this, he also gets the summoning of Giratina, who looks honestly menacing as all hell. 
And just as things are happening, a portal opens up and Cynthia shows up as well. It seems like there's a tear in space and time that has opened up and we're sent over there to a different world. You know, we're just sent into a parallel universe, man. Guess what? We find ourselves in the distortion world with Cyrus, and now it's time for our final battle. Now, he starts by using a Dialga and Palkia, which we actually end up destroying the, destroying the Dialga with a single close combat, and then we hit Palkia with a close combat as well, which thankfully defeats both of these legendaries. So now Cyrus is basically kind of defeated, but now he decides to use his actual team. So he battles us with his real squad, First out is his Probo Pass, where you take it down with the help of Infernape and close combat combos. Against the Gyarados, we send in Pikachu, actually saving our boy. We're going with a Thunderbolt, which takes down Gyarados with a single hit KO. Next out, though, is Arcanine, and here we go for Mac Punch, but the extreme speed from Arcanine defeats us. Straptor, however, however, has enough speed to finish off the Arcanine with Aerial Ace. Against Probo Pass, we go for a close combat, even though it wasn't necessary. Honchkrow eats a close combat before Gengar has to come out and finish it up with a Dazzling Gleam. Raticate, however, is out next, and here, two Dazzling Gleams take it down with Gengar. With only one Pokemon, that being Weavile, we have to send out Farfetch'd, but he is outsped and only Snorlax remains. We start with using Curse, but the Weavile hits us with Icicle Spheres, but now we can use Body Slam, which does insane damage and takes down Cyrus's final squad member. Now that Cyrus has lost, all that is left for him to do, and guess what? We do that. We confront it, and the battle is relatively difficult as the Giratina is extremely hard to defeat because of it being level 100. But eventually, Gengar is able to take it down using Shadow Ball, but it doesn't really matter because, well, once we've once we defeated it, we now gotta get out of this place. Cynthia helps us now, and we make it out of the place. She tells us to go and meet Professor Rowan and tell him what we've achieved. Now that we've done that, we've talked to Professor Rowan, we make our way towards Sunny Shore City, and this is the location of our final gym challenge before the Elite Four. As we enter Sunny Shore, a red-haired man called Flint meets us and tells us he's an Elite Four member. He wants to battle us, but our team is already low health from the previous route, so trying to beat him doesn't really work out, and so we end up kind of just barely defeating him with only Snorlax remaining to defeat his Magmortar, which works out, but yeah, our team is kind of exhausted. While we're relaxing on the beach, we run into Jasmine from the Johto region. We then head into the lighthouse and find Volkner. Kind of similar how to you find, you know, how you find Jasmine back in Johto. Either way, after we going through a few puzzles in his gym and all of his grunt grunts are basically defeated, we finally reach Volkner himself. So here it is, lads. It's the final gym battle against Volkner, the electric type gym user. We start off with Infernape as per usual, force and far fetched. Because in this game, uh, actually in this specific version, I guess, the battle is a double battle. So we start by going against his Rotom Wash and his Electivire, which we eventually manage to defeat quickly with the help of a Leaf Blade against Rotom in a close combat against the Electivire. However, the Electivire actually uses Fake Out against it, or actually we start by that, uh, and then we are able to take it down. Next up, we have Staraptor, because Farfetch was destroyed, but Volkner has a Manectric and a Magnezo, which are both weak to our fighting type moves, but we're also weak to those electric type moves on, you know, on on our Saraptor. So we use two close combats, one from Infernape and one from Saraptor. However, the Manectric is very strong and fast, but eventually it takes itself out with a Flare Blitz before our Snorlax and Gengar have to come out and do the rest of the work. We use Curse on Snorlax to boost our attack and defense. Meanwhile, Sludge Bomb from Gengar takes half the health away from the Pachurisu, which is now out. We only have Pikachu and Snorlax after Gengar falls. However, Snorlax now can use Rest and then spam Body Slam, and then Grass Knot on Pikachu is able to defeat them. With the last Pokemon remaining being Raichu, we eat an Ice Punch from the Raichu, and then hit the Grass Knot and the final Body Slam to defeat Walkner and get our final Gym Badge for this journey. We decide to leave Sunny Shore and head towards the Pokemon League, but before that, we run into Barry. Once again, he wants to just talk to us. Either way, once we've done that, we make it to the Victory Road, and we go through it. We run into a lot of different trainers while inside of here. Someone throughout the cave, well, actually some port, I guess, throughout the cave, we reach Route 224, where we find Dawn. She asks for a battle, so we have to oblige, because if we don't battle her here, we can't make it to the, I guess, Pokemon League. So either way, for the next four of our Pokemon, or rather for our first Pokemon, Alakazam out first, we actually make sure to fake it out, to flinch it, and then flare blitz it to defeat it. And for the next four of our Pokemon, we just spam close combat over and over and over again until Lopunny comes out and stops our sweep. So we use Staraptor instead with Aerial Ace to take it down. 
Against the Clefable, we go for a Brave Bird, which does tons of damage, but we have to use it a second time around to defeat the Clefable, leaving us a lower health. And with her final Pokemon, Torterra, we're able to, again, hit it with another Brave Bird before Staraptor finally falls. Since there isn't much HP left on Torterra, we use Farfetch with Brave Bird as well, and that's enough to defeat Dawn. And just as we're able to enter the Elite Four now after leaving Victory Road, Barry just has to ruin our triumph. We start the battle against him off against his Sableye, which he tries to set up Rain Dance, which is a bit weird, so we go for Flare Blitz, but it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it is able to burn the Sableye, so we then actually switch out Gengar instead and save the Infernape for now. We get hit by a Shadow Sneak on Gengar, but then we use Dazzling Gleam, which after two hits, manages to take down the Sableye. However, he has a Meganium next, and here Gengar just uses Sludge Bomb, which actually defeats it in a single move, like it actually was really lucky. The following Pokemon is Kingdra, who Hydra pumps Gengar to death because of course the rain dances up, which makes it way stronger and pretty much guaranteed to hit. We send in Farfetch with a Leaf Blade, but once again the Hydra pump hits us and one it KOs our poor duck. So, with a tiny bit of hope left, we send in Pikachu, who manages to avoid the Hydra pump and hits the Thunder to do a lot of damage, and then we're able to outspeed our Thunderbolt and hit first and take down Kingdra. However, next up is our Moldo, and we use Surf on Pikachu, which does tons of damage, but the x defeats our poor little, well, I guess, Pikachu. Either way, Infernape now gets to return, and we use Close Combat to finish the Armaldo. With Scissor coming out, next we use Flare Blitz, which of course one-hit KOs, because, well, at the end of the day, it is going to be super effective against it, leaving only one more Pokemon, that being Empoleon. With a single Close Combat, though, we have defeated Barry. It seems he actually seems kind of sad, but who cares, with time for us to take on the Elite Four. And here we go, our first battle against is against Eren the Bug User. Now, we begin with Fake Out against this Drapion, we then go for Flare Blitz, which was amazing damage, but the Drapion uses only Toxic Spikes, so our friend is still alive. This is actually really good for us. We use Mac Punch next, which is able to take down the Drapion. However, next out is Yan Mega, and thankfully we outspeed it with Flare Blitz, and it is destroyed. Ledian comes in next, and we use a Flare Blitz again, which works out. Scyther comes out, and same thing here. Once again, the Flare Blitz is just too strong. It destroys the poor bugs. However, we also lose our buddy Infernape in the process because we do get a lot of recoil. Now, next up is going to be Staraptor from us, but it doesn't get poisoned by the Toxic Spikes because, of course, it's flying. After using two Aerial Aces, we're able to take down the Vespi Queen that he sent in. With only Wormadam remaining, we use Brave Bird and finish up the battle against Eren, taking down his whole team. The second member of, of course, the Elite Four is going to be Bertha with her squad of ground types. And honestly, this battle was probably going to be the hottest. So what we do here is we start with Snorlax. And we use Curse several times to boost our attack and defense as much as we possibly can. We do this to guarantee the sweep through this team. In the meantime, her Nido Queen uses Spikes, and after finally doing enough boosting, we decide to go for Body Slam and defeat the Nido Queen in a single hit. Next up is Dugtrio. We hit it twice because it has Sturdy, so it survives the first one. Our Snorlax is so bulky and hard to take on, that we're able to hit Body Slam against the Mammoth Swine as well, which also gives us a single hit and defeats it like it's nothing. Quagsire follows up next, and same thing here. A single Body Slam and it is gone. It does all the work. Donphan follows up, and the same fate here comes to it because we Body Slam it and destroy it. With only Rhyferia remaining, Meaning, we try to use Crunch instead, which takes half of its HP away. With a second Crunch, Rhyferia is gone and done for. Meaning that we defeated Bertha with just the help of our big boy Snorlax. However, our next battle is against the Fiery and Flamey Flint, who uses Fire types. I'm gonna be real, this battle was really difficult. First up, we send in Pikachu, and we try to use Surf against his Magmortar, which doesn't take it down, but does do some decent damage. So we go for a second Surf, but before we can do that, the first, I guess the first Fire Blast hits us, and Pikachu is gone. So next, we use Staraptor and go for Aerial Ace, but again, Staraptor stands no chance against the Magmortar either. Things are looking kind of bad, so it's time to use Infernape. We use Mag Punch, and Magmortar finally falls. Next out is Flareon, so here we go for Close Combat, which does tons of damage, but the Flareon hits us with a Close Combat as well. So to make sure we defeat it, we go for Mag Punch to fully finish it off. Flint, however, does also own an Infernape, and it hits us with a Mag Punch first, defeating our Infernape, so our poor monkey is gone. So we send in Farfetch and we survive a second close combat, and then we use a Brave Bird, which defeats the Infernape, but we also lose Farfetch in the process. However, next we use Gengar against the Ninetales, and here we use Sludge Bomb, which almost won a KOs, but of course, this thing has Focus Sash, so it goes for an overheat, and Gengar is gone. With no other options, we again have to rely on Snorlax coming back in, and we use one Curse to try and boost our attack and defense to ensure our victory. This goes well as we're able to handle the overheats and also boost our attack in the process even more. And now it's time for Body Slam, baby. The Nine Tails is done for, Rapidash is out next, and same thing here. It uses Flare Blitz, which leaves us weak enough 
for, I guess, our body slam to basically just be able to hit it second time around and defeat it. With only Arcanine left, we eat a wild charge on Snorlax and then our body slam does tons of damage. But we need to use it twice, but the Arcanine also heals itself, so it's barely any health or chances left for it before our final body slam hits it and Flint has now been defeated. This was honestly so difficult, but finally it is done. Now we have the final Elite Four member remaining, that's the Psychic type user, Lucian. First down, he uses his Grump Pick. So we go for Shadow Ball on Gengar after being taunted. The Shadow Ball does hit, but it's not enough to defeat it. So we try to use a second one. We hit it first and it's enough to defeat it. Next in is Hypno, the creepiest Pokemon of them all, like the Creepo. So we go for a Shadow Ball and it does tons of damage. But once again, it's not enough to defeat it in a singular hit, so we lose our buddy. But during the attack, Hypno also falls to the recall damage, so it's perfect. So Raptor is out next and it's up against the Bronzong, so since Bronzong has the Psychic typing, our close combat is not enough to instantly defeat it, and we have to spam it a few times before it's able to take it down and is close to defeating it. After that, Gardevoir joins the fray, and this time around we use a Brave Bird which one hit KOs and actually kind of caught me off guard. I didn't expect it to just be defeated right off the bat. Chime Cho is up next and it's damaged by the Brave Bird, but then Osteraptor finally has to fall, so Snorlax, our big buddy, Buddy is out next with a single crunch to defeat the Chimcho, which is more than sufficient for the job. The final Pokemon is Gallade, and this thing destroys our poor Snorlax, so Farfetch comes out, but the Psycho Cut ends this mission early, and we don't really know what to do here, so we use Infernape next. We start with a Fake Out, which flinches this fella, and then we go for a Flare Blitz, which outspeeds and ends Gallade's journey, meaning we've defeated the final Elite Four member, leaving only one challenge left to go. And here it is, the final battle against, of course, Cynthia and her insane squad. Now it's time to rumble. Her team starts off, of course, with a Locario, so we go for a Shadow Ball on our Gengar, and it's almost defeats it, but then we get taken down instead. But luckily, Locario falls from the attack as well, from its life orb. Since we don't know what's gonna come out next, we use Snorlax and try to use Curse to boost our defense and attack, but the dazzling gleam from the Togekiss actually is really, 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 really strong. But eventually, after surviving a few flamethrowers as well, we're and such, we're actually burnt, but our body slams still do tons of damage, uh, and we make sure that Snorlax lives, so we use Rest to heal it and remove our burn. Now, this works out perfectly. When our big boy awakens, he's able to defeat the Togekiss with a second body slam. However, next out is Low Punny, and it uses Fake Out and then a high jump kick on us, but our body slam is still stronger and the low punny is gone. For Glaceon who comes out next, we get destroyed by its earth power and we still have Infernape so a single close combat does take it down eventually. Gastrodon however survives a close combat but almost defeats our Infernape using earth power. So we use Farfetch'd with Leaf Blade, which actually is able to defeat the Gastrodon. With only one Pokemon remaining, it is her Garchomp. She starts by using a Dragon Ant, which is very bad for us, because that's going to boost her, I guess, speed and attack. So we go for a Leaf Blade, which doesn't do a lot of damage, so one Earthquake later and our buddy is gone. We send in Pikachu instead and go for the Grass Knot, which, again, we do not really do much because we get outsped, leaving only Staraptor to go for a close combat, and the Garchomp just uses this moment to Dragon Dance, but it doesn't matter because, baby, the close combat is strong enough to defeat the Garchomp. That means we've completed our journey. We've beaten Luminescent Platinum and taken down the strongest of trainers, Cynthia. I want to thank you all for watching this video, and let me know what characters challenges you guys want to see next.